Welcome. Today's project is this uh, Fire Shark arcade board that I got a big discount on because it has a problem with corrupted sprites. As you can see, it uh, doesn't look like it's drying the transparency for the sprites like it's supposed to. So, we'll need to see if we can get to the bottom of it. Um, I've got my logic probe already connected here using a test clip. Let's go ahead and see what we can find out. So according to my research here, this lower left-hand corner of the board is the area that's responsible for sprite generation. Um, this is basically the sprite uh, generating graphics chip. It goes and lifts um, sprite data from these EEPROM chips here. Or, sorry, those are mask ROMs. So it lifts uh, data from these ROM chips travels through all these uh, TTL logic processors, fills up memory chips here and along here, and then um, when it goes to draw them out, it goes and pushes them out to um, output up over here. I believe that's the way that it all works. Um, might not have 100%, but long and short of it is, um, a lot of the sprite problems on this board are usually related either to issues of this custom chip or um, with the chips in this area. So a common fault um, is that the legs on this custom chip um, tend to uh, get detached easily because they just don't use much solder at the factory. So um, what I tried already before starting this video was uh, I went and just uh, reflowed all the legs and unfortunately that didn't make a change. Um, it still had corrupted graphics before, corrupted graphics after. So I think next what we'll do is we'll look at the, uh, we'll go ahead and probe the address lines and data output lines on these four mask ROMs and see if we can figure out uh, if one of them isn't getting signals properly. And if it's not, we can backtrace it from there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the, um, the data sheet for these on, uh, on the screen here. These uh, mask ROMs, you'll notice that there's, um, they're basically they use the same pinout as a 27C301 uh, EEPROM, but the EEPROM uses these extra set of four pins here on the ends. So if one of these mask ROMs ends up being defective, I could actually desolder the uh, stock socket and then add in a longer socket and drop an EEPROM in. The board is actually designed so it can use either the 28-pin mask ROMs or the 32-pin uh, EEP ROMs. Okay, so let's go ahead and work our way down. The data sheet um, shows um, all 32 pins, where so basically we'll just ignore the top two pins on um, each side of the chip on the data sheet and just trace our way down. So this, what's pin one on the mask ROM here will be. Uh, pin 3 on the data sheet. So pin 3 is address line 15. So we've got an activity there. Then address 12, address 7, address 6, address 5, address 4, address 3, address 2, address 1, address zero. Now we've got three output lines. Oh, wait a minute. So output line zero is holding high. It should be fl flickering. I've seen the same thing on output one and same thing on output two. And then this last pin is ground, so that should hold low. So yeah, those outputs should be showing activity, and they definitely are not. Basically, the address lines are getting set calling for data, and then the output lines um, send the data out. Now, let's check the other side, because what could be happening is if the it isn't receiving a chip enable signal, that, or an output, well, let's say output enable um, won't be used on this chip, because that's part of the two extra rows that aren't being used, but it will use the chip enable, the CE line, and that needs to be enabled for the chip to show output. So let's check the other side. So this will be output three. It's holding high. Same thing of output four. Same 
Same thing of output 5, output 6, output 7, and chip enable. That's uh, CE, so it's got a line over it. That means that it's active low. Oops. And so I slipped there. Hang on. There we go. And that is showing low, so it's just enabled all the time. So this chip should be showing plenty of output. Let's compare it to its partners here. So if I check right here on our questionable chip, that's input, or sorry, output two, it's showing high. Same one here, showing a ton of activity. Up here, showing a ton of activity. And up here, showing a ton of activity. So yes, this mask ROM looks like it may have failed because even though it's getting address lines being set and it's getting chip enable being set, it's not showing any outputs. Let's check the other address lines just to be certain. So this top one here, this is not connected. This one's address 14, showing activity. Address 13, showing activity. 8, 9, 11, 16, 10. All showing activity. Then we're back to the chip enable, which is always on because it's active low. And then we're back to our outputs, which are not showing output. So yes, I believe this mask ROM might have failed. Let me go ahead. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a uh, EEPROM and program it with the same code. And uh, I'll have to desolder this socket and put in a 32 pin socket and we'll drop an EEPROM in and we'll see if that fixes it. Okay, so I just went ahead and used my uh, Hacko FR300 to desolder all the pins that hold that socket into place. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is take my tweezers and just kind of work my way down the line a few pins at a time and uh, work the legs free of any uh, remnant solder that might still be holding on onto the side of the uh, holes. Like that. And then I should be able to just flip the board over and should be able to just gently lift the uh, socket off the board. So one sec. Okay, so now we're back on the front side of the board, and after wiggling all the wigs loose, and start gently kind of tugging on this. Sometimes what you have to do is kind of tug on the socket gently with one hand while still also working the pins from the back a little bit. You can see it's starting to lift up, but the key thing is you don't want to apply too much pressure and rip any traces off. So, yeah, it's... It's working its way up, but it looks like maybe there's still a few legs. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. All right, good. So that came out. Let's just go ahead and make sure we didn't lift any traces. Everything looks okay there. All of our circles for the through holes are intact. We'll flip the board over. Look at the back side. Okay, yep, needs to be cleaned up. It's a little dirty, but all our traces are intact. So, yep, key is to uh, desolder cleanly, wiggle those legs free, and lift gently, and that you should be able to get a socket out without any damage. So let me go ahead and clean this up and get a fresh socket ready to drop in. Okay, so I got my uh, pins from the removed socket cleaned up on both sides of the board, and I've got a new 32 pin socket ready to drop in. I'm going to go ahead and drop that into place and solder it up off camera. Okay, so I've got the new socket uh, soldered into place and then I went and scrubbed it up with uh, um, isopropyl afterwards to clean up the leftover flux. It's looking pretty clean. So next uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get the EEPROM prepped. Okay, so you can see here the uh, 
uh, mask ROM labeled uh, ROM01 that um, I removed from the board, which appears to be faulty because it's not showing any output on its uh, activity on its output lines. And then uh, this is the equivalent uh, 27C301. You can see it's got those four extra pins, which is why we had to put the larger socket in. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put it into the chip programmer like so. And then inside the software, we need to tell what kind of chip it is. So we'll go to select, do 27. C301 and Hitachi was the only company that made these types of chips. As far as I know, those two are equivalent. So we'll hit that and then I need to say what file we want to program. So go find my Fireshark dump. There it is. And we want to do ROM1. And now we'll go ahead and tell it to program. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and take maybe about 30 seconds to program and verify. So once it's done, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, drop into the board and see what we get. All right, I got my programmed EPROM ready to go here. You'll see that there is a notch on the left side of the EPROM that needs to match up to the notch on the left side of the socket. And let's make sure those pins are lined up with holes correctly. Looks like it is. Into place, like so. And there we go. Okay, let's plug it in and see what we get. All right, with the new EEPROMs in place, it looks like the game is working properly. We're not seeing the sprite corruption and uh, solid background uh, on the sprites, the lack of transparency that we were seeing before. So I think we can call this project good. I'll go ahead and try a few test rounds on it and uh, make sure everything works okay. Well, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next project.